Hello guys and gals, welcome to a new tutorial. In today's video we are going to be covering how you can save and load game data using Unreal Engine 4. Now obviously this isn't just going to be like, you can go to file and press save, this is going to be how you can save actual game data once the game is running. Um, it's not too complicated, um, but if you don't know how to do this, hello Mr. Man. Ooh. If you don't know how to do this, um, then it's the start it can seem to be a little bit overwhelming. Um, but I'm going to help you guys uh, understand it a little bit better and hopefully at the end of this video you'll be able to set up some more complicated uh, safe game systems. So I'm just in the third person example map, you know, my number one go to for stuff. I've created myself a little folder here which is just save, saving tutorial. Now you can place these wherever you want. It's suggested that you keep all of your files. Um, Saved in specific locations, you know, have, an, have a hierarchy for things so that you can find things easier. And so that if there's more than one person working on a project, that, you know, you can all find the stuff that you need to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to right click, head to Blueprint Class. And then rather than using anything on the list, we're going to head to All Classes, which for you will be collapsed. Click All Classes. Under search, search for save game, and you can see here we've got object and then we have save game. Select save game, select, and then we're going to call this test underscore save. Now this guy is just a an empty blueprint which will allow us to store variables and call it whenever we need to. So I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to change this from a bool to a vector. And the reason I'm going to do this is one of the things I want to save is the player location. So I'm going to call this player, no, in fact, uh, location save. So I'm going to call this location save. I'm going to press compile. I'm going to make this uh, public so that I can get it wherever I need to. And the default, I'm just going to leave the default at 000. Now I'm going to select a third person character because this is where I'm going to store most of the save data. And I'm going to press edit over in the world outliner. Now that he's open, what I can do is I can create a new variable. And this variable is going to be player lock. We're going to change this to a vector. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to assign a couple of keys for saving. So I'm going to say keyboard one. So keyboard one is how I'm going to save. Now you can use you can do this however you want. If you wanted it to be on overlapping a specific uh, trigger box you could do that if you wanted it so that they have to be standing somewhere and you press a button then you can do that you can do it through menus it's gonna be the same sort of deal after this point however you decide to input it it's up to you um, but after this the logic is gonna follow through the same way what we're going to do is we're going to create oops, a save game object the class is going to be our save game blueprint so I've called mine test save. The return value we're going to promote to a variable and we're going to call this save ref. Then we are going to, we need to get our player location. So first thing we'll do is we'll see from the player location, we will set this. We will get actual location like so, plug that into here. Then from our save reference, we will set our, it was our location save, set location save, like so, we'll set the location save to what our new player location is. Now, we could just bypass that, but certain things we are going to need to set a variable, so I'm doing this here just to show you the workflow. Uh, I'll set up another example afterwards, um, but you'll see why we need to to pull from specific variables at the same time shortly. Next thing we will do is we will uh, save game to slot. I'm going to call this test. The save game object is going to be dragged from our create save game object, like so. And then what we will do is we will just print a string, which will say game saved. I will compile this, close this down, press play, 
and if I press 1 on the keyboard, you can see up in the corner, it's saying game saved. Which is all well and good, but for now we can't actually do anything with that. So, we're going to reopen the third person blueprint. We are going to find a keyboard, you guessed it, keyboard 2. Now here what we're going to do is say does save game exist slot name test so the reason we're going to do this is so that we can't just load uh, no data at all we'll branch this return value if false we're not going to do anything at what well, if false we'll print string print sting what is that I don't want to print sting print string uh, no data exists now we shouldn't get that happen but I'm doing it just in case so if we don't ever have a, a save game uh, in that slot then it's gonna load our defaults which in this case will move our player to 000, zero, zero which we don't really want what we will do now is if true we will load a game from slot slot name is test the return value we will cast to, to our save game blueprints we're casting to a test save now we need to set a local player location so the one inside the third person character as test save we will get location save and plug this in like so And then what we'll do is we will set actor location because obviously we need to tell the player character itself that it's got a new location to head to, like so. <clears throat> now if we press play and I press 1, we'll get the game saved. I'm going to run up to the top of the stairs, I'll save the game, run down, if I press 2, we move back to the stairs. Okay, now this should persist across, across gameplay, so if I'm here now and I press 2, you can see it's remembered the game save from before, and that's exactly what we wanted it to do. So, can we use this slightly differently? Yes, and this is going to be that uh, this other little thing that I uh, briefly mentioned. So, let's move this down a little bit because we're going to need a bit more space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another key for adding some points so we'll add a variable we're going to change this to an integer and I'm going to call this score compile that very quickly and then I will say keyboard 3 in fact we'll do mouse left button so a mouse left button we will uh, set our score to score plus 10 and then what we'll do is we will print string and plug our score variable in which will create a converter from integer to string and that will now print our score for us so if I compile this and I head into the game if I left click you see now it's printing a score incrementing by 10 every time I click great really easy game click and get score oh, cookie clicker yay no I hate those games so lame People are making so much money because they've made a game that automatically increases an integer. Great. Good job. Alright. That was very cynical, wasn't it? Ooh, meow. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to update the actual save function itself. So what we'll do here is we will drag from... Oh, no, we won't. We have to open test save. Give this a new variable. Integer. Score. Save. Compile this. Leave it at default of zero, and then from our save game object in third person character, which is on a initial press of one, we will set score save. And we are setting our score save to our score. So just drag and plug score in. Update these pins like so. There we are. And then on loading, we need to do the same sort of thing. We need to get score save then set score locally to what score save is and then what we will do 
is we will just quickly print a string for score to show whether or not it's actually brought over the correct value. So we'll compile that. We'll press play. I'm going to left click 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I'm going to press 1 to save. I'm going to move away just to make sure it works. I'll press 2 and you can see now I've still got 80 points and it's placed me back where I should be. 1 to save, 2 and you can see there we've got it all working. Lovely jubbly. Yay! You can go a little bit further with the player location if you needed to save the player location you can actually save the angle that the camera is currently at by rather than saving the location you can save transform uh, and then you can get the transform of the camera itself uh, but then you also need to plug in the scale of the character now the scale is probably always just going to be a default of 111 um, but in case you've changed your character scale for whatever reason uh, you can save that as well hopefully uh, some of you guys find that uh, useful and you'll be able to create some pretty epic um, save functions of your own. Hopefully that explains the system to you. Okay, so thanks for watching. See you next time.